Hello and happy Monday. I am Meredith and I am here with our message for the 28th of October, 2024. We're using Sawyer's Path again for our message today. We've got the sun in Scorpio, the moon in Virgo, fabulous retrogrades happening. And we're tuning into the energy atmosphere. Let's see what we've got. Our first set of two cards. We're starting out with, wow, the emperor. <laughs> Really, we've had some stellar cards to kick off our readings lately. So the Emperor is no slouch here. He's number four out of the Major Arcana, super stable energy. And you know he's got the nickname of the know-it-all. I've switched it up to the experienced it all. <laughs> because I do not perceive this beautiful divine masculine father of tarot energy to be a know-it-all. Uh, Though he's got loads of experience. So this is what we're tapping into and taking action on in our own energy field today. And the Emperor is paired with, whoa, the King of Swords. Now there's a combo, folks. Woo. Talk about being decisive, determined. Hmm. That's what the King of Swords brings to the party. Now the Emperor is all four kings rolled into one. So to be, to be paired with a king is kind of a profound message. <laughs> I'm thinking of the uh, Communicate Clearly card out of Angel Answers. No BS today, no verbal clutter. Uh, <laughs> we'll be speaking our minds. I like that though. And we'll be speaking our hearts. Let's say that. And our authenticity as well. So I feel that we have a very motivating energy. We feel inspired. We want to take action. I mean, how can you not see that with these two cards here? So motivation, inspiration, and taking action through our divine masculine energy in a very decisive, deliberate, and intentional way. Next. <laughs> two of Pentacles, great. Wow. Okay, good. This means, you know, with the Two of Pentacles, you tend to be weighing out options. And I feel that the Two of Pentacles is a very stable card as well. Notice the nice sun energy here on the Emperor card and on the Two of Pentacles as well. This card is often pigeonholed as a decision-making kind of card and like, you know, we're leveraging one thing for another. Actually, it's a message about stability and calm, which is wonderful because we're able to see all sides of the coin in front of us or the coins in front of us. And we choose wisely. Now with the Emperor and the Knight of Swords here, decision making will not be difficult. We're going to get to the heart of any matter in brilliant clarity with great happiness and joy here with this nice sun energy and with that inspiration motivation energy channeled through our own divine masculine uh nothing is really going to happen slowly today i have the sense with these first three cards we're going to move through everything rather swiftly next we have oh and see here's some more calm energy in the four of swords gorgeous card it's a card of preparation for whatever is coming next. And it's peace. It's a centered energy. So we're we're grounded in our two of pentacles. I feel like we're very well grounded and stabilized in our emperor energy. We've got another four here on the table. So great mental stability. And I also feel mental flexibility, which brings about that speed in which we are uh, navigating the day. We may have many things to contemplate, but there's no such thing as deliberate in the contemplation. It's, we know it, we know it, we know it. And it's kind of rapid fire and we're going for it through motivation. Excellent. Nice. Now we have the queen of swords, the match set here with the king and the queen. So divine feminine energy is just as well balanced. See, this is a nice nod back to the two of pentacles. And you could consider each of these court cards on each of these coins. So however we are leveraging the options before us, we will be decisive, we will be swift, we will engage our experience in a very calm, stable, relaxed, peaceful way for 
our highest and greatest outcome. Next set of three cards, page of, of cups. This is an amazing manifestation card. So this is the page with the ace of cups. The fish in the cup is representative of what we're bringing to life on our foundation. So we, you know, I mentioned this last week that I felt like energies have lifted in such a way as to feel like recognizing the evidence on offer to us becomes much more clear and easy to recognize in the current atmosphere. Even though we still have all these retrograde energies going on, we started to see signs and, you know, we've been turned to our intuition over and over and over again for weeks in the cards. And I think on Friday, we even pulled out the look for a sign card out of Angel Answers. And so here it is. And because we're seeing signs, we're faced with new options in our two of coins, which is fantastic that we feel no sense of urgency, which is wonderful because there's no sense of pressure and or outside stress bearing down on us. We're approaching everything in front of us with, from a place of calm, centered, grounded energy, which is fantastic for us. So we can make inspirational and motivating movements with everything that's in manifestation for us. Oh my gosh. And then there's the sun, happiest card in tarot, paired with the page of cups. So this is the sun shining on your manifestations or everything that you're bringing to life on your foundation. It doesn't really get a whole lot better than that, does it? And then, beautiful, the Eight of Wands. This card is so loaded with meaning. Uh, it's incoming information. So I see this as incoming, in, incoming signs for us to be very aware of in our intuitive gifts. So this is also communication with other people. You may be receiving information from other important people in your realm, in your sphere of influence. And this is also a unifying card. It's, it's, um, it's how energy gets woven together from other information. And we're, again, we're moving on every new bit of information rather swiftly or every new recognition in our own spiritual journey in relationship to what we're co-creating with the divine. Beautiful. So you're going to see some movement there. Your intuition is definitely going to fire. You have great mental stability here in this four. Harmonized energy between the king and the queen of swords. And the ability to weigh out the options decisively through all of our gorgeous experience with that wonderful emperor card right there. Bottom of the deck, what's going on behind the scenes that the universe is helping us out with? Ace of Wands, <laughs> excellent, fire, motivation, ambition, drive. So the day is supercharged in a way for us, or the energy atmosphere is charged to meet us where we are at within all of our divine co-creativity. What kind of energy are you bringing to the table today? How are you showing up? And then again, how are you being met? Remember that aces are a new beginning and a fresh start. They also take the sting out of any challenging cards nearby. <laughs> and there's a challenging card right after it in the Seven of Swords. This is the card, this card's called the Thief. Uh, you know, how do we rob ourselves of joy? How do we sabotage what's on our heart mind coherence through ego uh, tantruming, right? If this is occurring in the day, it's very swiftly recognized and dealt with in a way that's loving and harmonious. So it doesn't have to revisit in some sort of old trauma response, right? Gorgeous. And remember that sevens are all about heaven touching earth. So if you get, if you get to have the privilege of witnessing yourself being a saboteur for your own dream, be grateful for that because you're being shown an energy that does not serve you. So you bring the love and heal this so you don't have to repeat it again. <laughs> nice. Walk away. <laughs> Just walk away. Eight of Cups. Excellent card. See, again, we move through any challenges very swiftly today. Lots of fire. Lots of fire at our feet <laughs> in this Eight of Wands 
Ace of Wands energy. And then we have the Eight of Cups. And this is a card of momentum. It's also more motivation to keep going in, in the direction that you desire to go. This is a card that is also connected very much to Eclipse energy for me personally. And especially in the artwork of this card, you see the sun and the moon kind of together there. So remember that the rare and the uncommon is still filtering in from recent eclipses and eclipses in the spring and perhaps even from last year. They can last a long time. Excellent. Now we have the Ten of Swords. This is all about self-mastery. I like the way this has evolved because this Seven of Swords identifies for us anything we do that contributes to thinking small or feeling small than acting small rather than being in the inspiration and the momentum of our heart mind coherence it takes real self mastery to overcome those types of experiences on the seven of swords to get to the 10 remember the tens are all about fulfillment and this is another one of those heavy sigh, eye roll and groan type of cards when people see it though. I encourage you all to embrace this card because these 10 swords are the ace of swords to the power of 10, which is brilliant clarity, everlasting strength. That takes incredible self mastery to cultivate and turn into your new normal. So this is you evolving into your new normal because you're walking away from inspired by rare and uncommon energies with a great fiery wand here. You're walking away from things that have previously sabotaged you. Excellent. One more. Beautiful. What a great card. Six of coins right there. Generosity, reciprocity. And you see, you're weighing that out here on this too. You're leveraging energies in a very harmo harmonized way. It's so harmonious for us. And it brings a great blessing here. And it takes self-mastery to do all of this. I used to think, <laughs> let's time travel for a moment. Well, let's go back to the 90s. And uh, when I was just kind of waking up to my spiritual path. Like I always knew I was different. I always knew I was intuitive, psychic, whatever. That was always there. Though living that way was a completely uh, new concept for me. So <laughs> this is like a time machine walking out of uh, whatever the old normal was into the new normal. And where was I going with this? I had a really great point. <laughs> pardon folks I lost my train of thought oh well it'll revisit I'll share it again another day regardless here we are we've been investing in ourselves beautifully which you can see here in this 10 that's something to celebrate oh I know what I was gonna say so in the 90s way back when and I started to be a little more awake and aware I kind of felt like you get to this point in your spiritual journey where you're like, oh, I have arrived. And all that old BS from so long ago that traveled with me is just gone, gone for good. And isn't it funny though, how life will um, will show you otherwise. <laughs> Rather mundane yet fantastic simultaneously ways. So, what I have come to recognize, I don't want to say recently, but what I've come to recognize out of the spiritual journey is simply this, that the rain will fall, right? And the clouds will come. And there are just as many beautiful, bright, lovely, sunny, gorgeous days, right? There are days where we are all pressed uh, to what we think is a limit and... We look, well, you know, for example, that we had a really great reading full of cups, full of wonderful cards. And I was talking with one of my dearest and oldest friends and we were kind of discussing the day and I had said to her, you know, if I were to consider the reading that I put out on YouTube today, my day doesn't look anything like what those cards suggested. So that's the point I'm getting at. Like 
we we start out on a spiritual path. We wake up, you know, we come out of some kind of dream into a more fantastic dream. And there's this perception that everything's going to be roses. And it isn't exactly that way. There are still challenges. And this is where we meet ourselves. One of my, another one of my amazing soul, the amazing souls in my life often says, have you ever noticed every time you had a problem, you were there? I've probably shared this with you. You're the common denominator, right? So I feel like that's what these cards get at. They show us where we are our own problem. And then we perceive that problem to be an influence from something or someone else, never taking any sense of self-responsibility for it. But the joy and the beauty of the spiritual path is recognizing that you're going to have these mirror moments with the Seven of Swords. You're going to see your own sabotage. You're going to hear your ego. You're going to recognize that anytime you have a problem, you're it. It's you. So what if someone else is contributing to it? Why are you allowing that? Walk away, Eight of Cups, and reassess yourself and get on track with the dream that you have in your heart-mind coherence to be the love, the magic, and the miracle that you are. And all of these things live together cohesively. It's not like you arrive just this one day gloriously in your spiritual journey and you're like, yeah, I did it. Well, you know what? Tomorrow you could open up the fridge door and spill the pickles all over the floor, right? It's a challenge. It, it makes a mess. You got to clean it up. The same thing happens emotionally for all of us in the journey. And it's how we choose to celebrate it. And I really sense that these cards are getting at that. How do you celebrate everything that evolves in your now moment without going into some old story? Well, the emperor, the king, the queen of swords, they're here to point it out. They're going to show you your seven of swords and they're going to show you your mastery. And they're also going to show you a pathway through it and out of it, if that's your intention. Okay. Wow, that was a little bit of a rant there, huh? Okay, angel answers. <laughs> fresh perspective, fresh message. Put a question to the deck if you have one. <laughs> Beautiful, emphatic success, and the situation will improve if you allow it. <laughs> oh, then we have the romance card. I feel like that connects to the eight of wands. The romance card for me in Angel Answers is a union of hearts. How are we meeting ourselves in our own heart space? How are we meeting others in our own heart space? And how better can we bring the love to every situation? Next. Seriously. The Big Happy Changes card just loves us, doesn't it? It shows up so often. And then we have, if you believe, I love this card too, because what do you believe? Is it current? Is it an old story? Is it helpful? Is it serving your journey? <laughs> what new thing could you believe? Can you believe what an absolute miracle you are? Final word on the reading today from Angels and Ancestors. How's our soulful presence informing our waking consciousness? Okay. We have, oh, nice. We haven't seen this one in a while. We have the peacekeeper. <laughs> oh, here's some advice for your seven of swords. Let go of the need to be right. <laughs> Are you a right fighter? Hmm. I have been. <laughs> Most especially when I've been extremely wrong. Okay. And then we have great teacher. Learn from spiritual experience. What a great summary to the whole reading. Isn't that fantastic? Learn from your prior experience. Learn from your journey. Gosh. That confirms the emperor in the king of swords so nicely. And this is great advice, like I said, to the seven of swords. Have the most beautiful Monday ever. Thank you so much for joining me and hanging in there. Peace, love, happiness.
loads of laughter. Namaste.